So as I stand here, I'm gonna have my horse to my left, like I mentioned, me between the whip and uh, the horse. I'm gonna step back to the middle. I'm gonna ask my horse to circle. Now, when I want my horse to circle, I'm gonna keep my whip tail behind the horse's hindquarter or behind the tail of the horse. The handle, I want the handle in line with her brand. I want the tail in line with the horse's tail, like I mentioned, and everything's sort of parallel. So often in the clinics, what we notice is people sort of hold their whips like this, or hold their whips like this, and that starts to alter the form in the horse's body, knowing that his hindquarters might go out or his front end might slow down. Just as you saw with Tiger Lily, as I'm moving it up and down, she's responding no different to how I'd like her to respond to my leg if I was using my leg under saddle. So I wanna keep my whip very still and in that parallel position with my horse, shoulder lined up to the handle and the tail lined up to the tail of the whip. Also, what you'll notice is I'll keep my whip in the same hand, keep my lead rope in the same hand. If my horse is going left, my knuckles will be facing down. If the horse is going to my right, my knuckles will be facing up. So if I take her here and change the direction, the whip tail changes, so that creates the change of direction for the horse, and now she's going right, my knuckles are now raised up here to the ceiling. I've got my lead rope in the same hand as in my left hand, and it just sits over my right arm. Most of the introduction to Liberty in the halter and lead, we will start at the trot, just because it's actually really easy for a horse to be balanced at the trot. He's always got two feet on the ground. So he's either got his right front and his left hind or vice versa. So it's really easy for him to feel stable and balanced. Plus, it allows us to create a little bit of impulsion to keep the drive, as you can see. So she's driving. The next thing I'd want to do is I want to create some inside bend. So I'm really exaggerated it here. I'm not pulling on a nose. I'm just driving out a hind quarter a little bit more. So the reason why I want that inside bend is as you can see with Tiger Lily, it kept her focused on me for a start. And I want, you don't lay, lay down just yet, Precious, okay? It keeps her really focused on me for a start. She's watching me, she's circling me. She's not looking out on the fence, wanting to take that circle out larger. And when we turn her loose at Liberty, so if you've done a, a lot of lunging with your horse and then you've turned them loose at Liberty, they go looking for that fence and they almost go looking out. And then it's really hard to get them to focus back on me and concentrate and watch those whip aids. So I want her to be able to bend in and circle around me. Even though that she's really, really close, she's not on top of me because she's keeping her shoulder up and she's driving herself on that circle. The circle is staying the same radius all the way around, which is really important. If she was leaning on me, she'd be stepping in with her shoulder to balance herself. And therefore, if she's, if she's stepping in, her nose is gonna be pointing out and she's gonna be sort of stumbling on me. And I don't want that. I'm gonna drive the hip and the belly out. So push her out. And then that's gonna bring her head, neck and shoulder just into the circle, just where I want it and create this bend. But I'm not gonna pull on the lead rope. And the main reason for that is because I do not want her reliant. So going back to just creating, like I said, that bend, creating that circle, I don't want it reliant on the lead and we need it balanced to the whip. So when we talk about balance to the whip, if I change the direction of the whip, she changes the direction of a circle. And I'll start working on that smaller circle here and that drive that hind quarter out. Okay, as well as, as we become more advanced, I might want to ask it up to canter, All right? So I'll let her body be a little bit straighter, but I still want to nose in. I'll let her come in. Oh, good girl. And by asking the horse in, you'll notice I'm just dropping my whip, but if I put it to the right, she must come in on the left or vice versa, like we spoke about. And as you saw, as I changed the tail of the whip's direction, the horse followed the whip and changed direction also. Going back to that circle, once I asked that mare up to canter, you notice her body got a little bit straighter, but she still maintained some inside curve. I can't have her hips going out excessively because she needs to drive her hindquarter to hold her lead. Otherwise she'd be all disunited and choppy and she wouldn't be relaxed on that circle. So that's something that we need to know as, as a horse person, uh, form to function and to understand the horse how he needs what form he needs in order to function the maneuver that we're asking for.